Hello everyone and welcome back to Missile Dog TV channel and today's edition is about the JET program. So I'm not sure if many of you are aware, the JET program is a program where you know, foreign people, over, uh, international people from outside of Japan come to Japan and teach at uh, public schools in Japan as well as do other activities, international related activities. So today we have, you want to do a sort of self-introduction? Okay, hello. Uh, my name is Florin, and I'm currently a fifth year ALT uh, assistant language teacher in Hokkaido. Okay, and for those who are aware, my name is Ken. I'm also from the US as well, and I did the JET program a while back for five years in Tokushima. So today, we're going to just go over you know, the application process, you know, what you did, you know, the interviews and such, and then all the way to you know, your current, you know, how was it? you know, being in for four years or so. So the first time I heard about the JET program was when I was a junior in high school from my French teacher. And this was in the US. She knew that I was interested in Japan and Japanese music and culture. And she said, oh, my daughter is interested in it too. Uh, you should apply for the JET program. That was the first time I heard about it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, interesting. For me, the same kind of scenery situation, except for me, it wasn't someone introducing or someone introduced it to me, but it was my professor in oh. university. He's like, oh, so who wants to live in Japan and get paid for it? I was like, oh, hey, <laughs> why not, right? So I think in my junior year of college, I started thinking about, oh no, I'm going to graduate next year. What should I do? I felt that I wanted to continue studying Japanese. Uh, because I wanted to become fluent uh -huh. to the point of being able to work either in Japan or you know using Japanese and I felt that just from college I probably wasn't gonna get there mm. so I started looking into the JET program and the more I heard about it the more I thought oh that actually sounds like something that would be really great for me mm -hmm. uh, based on my background and everything the deadline was sometime in maybe October or November. Ooh. It was in the fall, right. in any case. Um, and it was a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm not sure if anything has changed, but I remember I needed so many different things. Um, the application itself, you have to fill out kind of like a normal job application, right. just very detailed. And they ask you some questions about like, what motivates you to live in Japan and your, sort of your background in Japanese or Japanese culture and things like that. I also needed my resume and letters of recommendation. I believe now you can actually apply online. Oh wow, cool. Uh, did you have to do, I know when I did the JET program I had to write an essay, you know, like an introduction, you know, yeah. and as you said, you know, why you want to go to Japan, what do you plan on doing? And yeah. So did you write your essay as well? I did. The essay was probably the hottest part. I think you can only write up to 500 words. Yeah, it's like one page yeah, or two like pages. One page double spaced yeah, or something. something. Like it's really short. It was kind of difficult to think about what to focus on. So I grew up in a sort of international background. My mom is from England Ooh. and my dad is from the US and I lived in the US until I was about six. And then we moved to England for three years. So when I was nine, we moved to Italy and we stayed there until I was about 16. Oh, Jesus. And then I came, we came back to the US and I did my last two years of high school and then university back in the US. In college for a while, I worked as a sort of on-campus helper mm -hmm. for international students. Oh. And my freshman year, I was in the global dorm. Mm -hmm. I kind of focused on that aspect of myself mm -hmm. for the JET essay. I also did write a little bit about how I became interested in Japan and why I started studying the language and why I wanted to live and work in Japan. I think the main things that they look for are why you want to go to Japan and what you can bring to the program. Right. But basically the point is that it's not just about teaching English, it's also about international right. exchange. And so I really focused on the international exchange part and the experience I had had with that. 
it was very difficult, and there were many drafts and many edits. Yeah, I had the same experience. So research into the program a little bit, and I'm sure you can find online. You know, people will you know have their yeah. essays up there, so you can kind of get an idea of what you should include, what you shouldn't. Yeah, I use the Tofugu guide. Oh, there you go. So like, I guess there's this website called Tofugu that does blogs about Japan. They had a really good jet guide when I was applying. You know, people, if you do plan on applying for the jet program, you still have to write the essay, your interest in Japan, why you're interested mm -hmm. in Japan, as well as, you know, what you can contribute to Japan. Not only what you want to learn from it, but also what you can, you know, international relations, you know, experience and stuff, you know, those sort of things I think are really important. How many do you need again? Need two? I, I think I needed two. Yeah. I really got to know my professors really well. And I took Japanese with the same Japanese professor yeah. pretty much all through, all right. except for the semester that I was studying in Tokyo. And so I got one letter of recommendation from my Japanese teacher. And then the other one I got from another professor who I believe at the time was the chair. And I, I took it with that professor mm -hmm. and ended up being able to get a letter of recommendation from oh. her as well. So there you go, just ask everyone. Ask your professors and stuff. I think I asked one of my professors and I was working on campus, you know, work, you know, as, as a job and I asked my supervisor to write me one just to because I didn't know who else to ask. So there you go. Yeah, someone who knows you well is definitely good. And I do like your situation, someone who knew you from you know right you know, over a few years so they can see how you've grown and they can yeah. express that in their letter. Now you don't always have to, I see a lot of questions online, you know, people are concerned, do I have to ask my university person, you know, you know, my professor and such, and I think the, the case is you can, and that's probably ideal, but, you know, you don't always have to, if you've been out of university for a while, you yeah. can ask your supervisor or, you know, someone else. Like that. After you turn in the application and everything, the next stage is, I believe, if you do pass the first stage, yeah. is the interview. Yes. And how was the interview? I found out that I got the interview probably sometime towards mm, beginning to middle of January. Okay. For me, uh, the interview, I was in a little bit of a pickle because I was applying through the DC consulate, mm -hmm. but the interview would have been in February of my last year of college. But that semester I was in Japan, I had actually asked ahead of time, mm -hmm. like, hey, if I do get the interview, I'm applying through DC, but I'm going to be in Japan at the time, like, what can I do? Mm -hmm. And they told me, oh, well, you can actually interview in any location as long as it's part of the same departure group. They won't let you interview on Skype. Oh, yeah. Uh, or at least they didn't back then. They may have changed things to make it easier, but it might also depend on the consulate or the embassy you're applying oh. through. Um, so yeah, they said, oh, you can go to Guam or Hawaii. And I said, oh, great, <laughs> sounds wonderful. So I ended up going to Guam. I got there in the afternoon, did some shopping, uh, went back to my Airbnb. The next morning I had the interview and the interview was in the morning, so I was done pretty early. Um, and then I went to the beach. Just general questions like, based on what you wrote in your essay, kind of, so it's definitely good to check your essay again before the interview so you at least are consistent or if maybe your opinions have changed, you can explain why. Right. Yeah, just like general job interview questions. They ask me a lot of what if questions. Uh, so some at some jet interviews they ask you to do a lesson. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, teach me this in like five minutes or something. They did not ask me that. There was also a Japanese oh. section. They kind of just wanted to gauge my Japanese level and how I like dealt with maybe uncertainty. And that was fine. There was a there was something that I didn't understand and so I just asked I said, oh, I'm sorry, could you say it again? Or, I'm sorry, I don't understand this word. Mm -hmm. And then they explained it to me in Japanese. And I said, oh, okay. And then I continued to right. answer. Even though that happened, right. it wasn't like a, a deal breaker or anything. And even if stuff doesn't go super smooth in the interview, it's more important to show how you adapt yeah. to like the challenge. One question they asked me was, I had purple hair at the time. Oh. And so they said, oh, I see you have purple hair. And I say, yeah, and he's like, I see in your application you have piercings as well on your face. And I say, yeah, I don't have them in right now, but yeah, I do. And they said, oh, would you be willing to like dye your hair a normal color and take out the piercings for work? And I said, well, yeah, of course, I mean, as you can see right now. So of course, so that wasn't even a problem, like even going into the interview with colorful hair, 
from friends who have also interviewed, it seems that the people who were jets before, like at least there's yep. usually at least one person who was a jet or who's worked in Japan who's been in the same situation as you. Yep. So they're not really there to like attack you. Like it's pretty friendly. I and think I was asked to like, do a, a self introduction. Like, oh really? You know, Pretend you're working at an elementary school and give a self introduction. Oh. And so, they, they didn't ask me to do that. No, like you mentioned, everyone's nice and then they do ask your Japanese level. So, if you do write you know, advanced or intermediate, make sure that you can actually speak sort of advanced or intermediate or understand. Otherwise, you know. Yeah, and the Japanese thing, like, even if you can't speak Japanese, you can still get in. It just yeah. will okay. depend on your placement. Because some places will want someone who speaks Japanese. Yeah. But other places don't mind, so. I had the results that I had been shortlisted, yeah. which means that you are, unless something crazy happens, right. you're, you're going on jet. So there's shortlist, alternate, and flat out rejected. Yeah. So shortlist, as she's mentioned, you know, you're pretty much set, you're pretty much good. You're just waiting on where you're gonna go. That alternate, you know, is the alternate. Yeah. And then you get rejected otherwise. Yeah. So when did you hear about your, you know, where you're going to be placed? It was around June. I want to say maybe mid June. I think honestly, the jet program, like application, it's such a long and stressful process, and you don't really get, in my opinion, a lot of information in a timely manner. Like you're kind of expected to just go go go. I wasn't aware of any of the Facebook groups or anything like that until I had already come to Japan. So there were a lot of things that. I think should have been more clear early on, like how much money to bring. Uh, like I found, I didn't find out about that until I received the general information handbook, and that was already in about June. Maybe that was kind of on me for not like doing research, but I kind of expected them to kind of tell you a little more information, you know? Share a bit of like hey, you know, just so you know, you need to save up like three thousand dollars. Maybe you should start doing that now. It was very, it was very short notice, and you, I left at the end of July, mm -hmm. and so I didn't know a lot of those like finer details until June. Right. It was a little stressful. <laughs> so the money situation, I mean, like you said, you need a certain amount of money, so yeah. make sure you have a lot of money before. Yeah. So once you find out you're shortlisted, start saving up as much as you can. Yeah, or even before, just assume you're gonna be accepted and start saving. All right, there you go. It never hurts to have savings, I guess. Yeah, so I have a driver's license in the US and I actually ended up needing a driver's license for my placement. Um, and I think one of the reasons I got placed where I did is because I had a driver's license when I applied. If you plan on staying for more than one year, which even if you don't plan on it, yeah. it's good to assume that you might. Yeah. Plans can change, good to plan ahead. And if you have less than three months on your license, then it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. Like you have to prove that you've had a license in your home country and have been driving okay. for at least three months. Uh, yeah. So you yeah. can find a lot of the license information online. You know? yeah. So just make sure you have all that paperwork ready. Mm -hmm. Then I think you need like the fingerprints, right? And the yeah. health check and that sort of stuff. Yeah, I had to get fingerprints. That was a whole ordeal. Uh, international driver's permit. Yeah. yeah, you can get that from, I AAA. got it from AAA. Yeah, AAA, you can just yeah. go there and they'll give you one there and mm -hmm. you have to pay. Then a health check, you go to the doctors, fill out the mm -hmm. form that they give you, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I think what to bring will depend on like what you who you are as a person and what you do. I tried to bring clothes, mm -hmm. obviously work appropriate clothes, uh, comfortable shoes, but some like regular, more casual clothes, just like a bit of a variety. Mm -hmm. For me, pants are an issue though. Uh, so I wore lots of pants. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so clothes is something. So depending on where you're going to yeah. be living and you know, your own lifestyle and like, mm -hmm. fashion sense and stuff like that, you know, please be you know, prepared to bring yeah. clothes and stuff that fit you or you know, like match you. If if you're a different size than most Japanese people, uh, you might have trouble finding things that fit. And then the sizes aren't the same. So you know, what would be a medium in the U.S. would be a large here and so on and so forth. So take that into account people when you're trying to pack your things. Uh, in terms of like other stuff to bring, I guess a lot of people have issue finding like deodorant. Oh, I, I like a really specific brand oh. of chapstick, so, and they don't really sell it here. So I 
uh, every time I've gone back to the U.S., I'm like stocked up. And also some toothpaste. Oh wow! I guess apparently the toothpaste in Japan doesn't have as much fluoride as it does in the uh, U.S. And maybe yeah. the water doesn't as well. But I guess if you have like specific products that you like to use, maybe it's like an organic brand or something that's a little more like a smaller brand yeah. or something. Uh, bringing that kind of stuff. You you may be able to order it online, but you might not be able to. Yeah. So having enough to last you a little while is is good if you're very particular about that kind of stuff. Yeah. So if you have any of those kind of things, just assume that they don't have it in Japan and just bring a bunch with you. It's what I would suggest yeah. as well. Really quickly, you know, preparation. Did you go, you know, contact your predecessor, you know, the person before you and get some information from them or? I did get a little bit of stuff from my predecessor and I asked some like specific questions about like the apartment because we were gonna live in the same place and uh, I ended up buying my car from her. So like stuff like that. Most of the other communication was done by the predecessor's predecessor who was still oh. there. And it was kind of nice because he would just email me or call me up with like questions or uh, like clarification, like, oh hey, I wanted to tell you this. That's probably not a typical situation though. Like, yeah, you might not hear anything. You might not have a predecessor. So, yeah, it can be really scary. I, I think the whole, overall, I think I've been very lucky <laughs> with my, like, jet experience, so. If possible, try and contact your predecessor and get more information about where you're going to be living. Then you can get a better idea of what you should bring and what, you know, you don't need to bring and save some of that luggage space for something else. For my situation, at least we had an orientation in, you know, where we're leaving from. But yeah. since you were in Japan, did you go back to the states once? And then... Yeah. So, well, I had to leave from the states, and I was in Japan for the semester, so I ended up going back to the states uh, around the beginning of May mm -hmm. for graduation, oh. and just you know to stay in the states until I left for Japan again. There were a few different events they held before at the, I think the embassy in DC. Some of them were mandatory. Like I think mainly the, on, the only one that was mandatory was the pre-departure orientation, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, yeah at the pre-departure orientation, they gave us our tickets and a, bunch, a lot of that information. A day or two before we actually left, it might've been two days before. After that, we all met at the airport at the designated time. We were halfway over the ocean. The captain comes on the like, intercom and says, hey, we have a problem with the plane. We need, oh. to, we need to go back. Someone ended up calling or posting in the Facebook page yeah. or something to sort of say, hey, uh, we, <laughs> we're stuck. In we're not going to get to orientation when we're supposed to. What should we do? Yeah, so I don't really know what orientation is like. I was only there for half of it. Okay, so maybe I can fill in a little bit for the yeah. normal one side. So like she mentioned, you know, you arrived the day before, so maybe probably in the afternoon, midday. Then from Tokyo Airport, they shuttle you to the, the hotel, they get you situated. You're roomed with maybe two other people. Yeah, I think there were two other people in my room. Yeah, so two people, so there's three people in the room, and then for the first day you get there, you can pretty much do whatever you want once you check in. So hang out in the hotel, or you can go to you know, Shira Shinjuku, Akihabara. Then the next day, mm -hmm. you know, wake up, there's a lovely buffet that you can go to, you can take part in. They have rooms where you can, you know, uh, iron your suits or your dresses or whatever, and then once you get dressed, you go to the classes or the orientation classes. And so I think the first day and the second day are pretty much the same. Yeah, just t basically teaching, training, and there was a panel from previous jets as well. Oh, I think on the second day. So a crash course on teaching, you know, mm -hmm. what to expect, and they give you a few. There's a few classes that maybe like a short introduction of a game or two, you know, oh, this is an interesting game that you can mm. do, and then they have everyone try to participate. Others, it's like lifestyle, so... I think since you were on JET and when I was on JET, the person, the people who were in charge of the actual like, yeah. Tokyo orientation changed. Ooh. So I think our, tra our like orientation was much more on the like professional work side of things, not so much lifestyle. Oh, okay. Yeah. The lifestyle aspect of it was covered more at our regional. Uh, orientation for us, which right. was run by like the jets in the in the area. And, Ooh, yeah. this just shows my age. Then <laughs> I do remember hearing from my predecessor's predecessor that when back in the day when he 
which was probably around the same time yeah. as you. <laughs> it uh, hurts. When he did it, it was completely different. So oh, okay, so yeah, yeah. that's what you learn with the jet program. A lot of things change. Yeah, things are changing constantly. Yeah. Hokkaido has a lot of jets, especially in the past couple of years. There's right now probably about 300, 200, Jesus. 300. Yeah, it is a lot because Hokkaido is so big. Um, so we have orientation in Sapporo. It was probably about a week after I arrived. Mm -hmm. It was oh, a couple yeah. days. My board of education booked a hotel and everything for me ahead of time. So I didn't have to worry about that. Uh, I know some places don't do that. So it's probably best to double check. Hey, where am I staying for this orientation? Did you book a hotel or do I need to do it? Hokkaido, because it's winter land, yeah. there's a lot of like specific information that you need to know. There's a whole, there was a whole workshop on driving and also winterizing your home. Uh, you have to drain your pipes or else they will freeze oh, yeah. and that's a problem. I think for me, the regional, yeah. Uh, orientation was much more useful than the uh, general one because it was more specific to my situation. How to survive in Hokkaido. No, I was placed in Tokyo, uh, Tokushima and then my original orientation wasn't so much an orientation was more of an English camp and then you know we talked with kids, we worked with children and did activities with them. Like We stayed at a shrine and then it was like over a course of I think three days or so. During the time that we weren't playing with the kids, they did the orientation you know, like what to expect, what to do in Tokushima and I think we also did a we had um, city walk tours, but that was like a separate thing. So did you have work with like English people or have that sort of camp thing? Um, no. So when I got to my town, there was already another ALT there mm -hmm. who had been there for a while. My first few days there before, it was during summer vacation right. that I arrived. So there were no classes. We pretty much mostly did like setting stuff up. Yep. So setting up bank account, registering me at the local town hall and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, filling out like health insurance forms. Oh. And once we'd done a lot of the administrative stuff, he took me around uh, on like a tour of the schools. Oh. And I got to meet some of the teachers ahead of time and like say hello and kind of get an idea of some things. And he, he like ran me through, kind of told me a bit about like what goes on in the right. town. I sort of knew ahead of time because I had received a letter oh. from my predecessor. They had sent me like a huge packet with a lot of information. So I kind of had a bit of an idea, but yeah. So then when I went to Sapporo orientation, I had already become familiar with my local area a little bit. Oh no, same here. Like yeah. before the English camp thing I should have mentioned, I also had that sort of, you know, three, four days, mm -hmm. five days of you know, getting me you know, acclimated to the area. But uh, when you said your predecessor took you to do the, you know, the administrative work. So I guess the bank account, mm -hmm. uh, cell phone and such, is that correct? Yeah, so it was my predecessor's predecessor, technically. Oh, okay. But yeah, they took me to do all of that. Oh. I They actually, ahead of time, had prepared a lot of stuff oh, for wow. me, which, uh, yeah, is not maybe typical. They might not do that. <laughs> and we did actually have an English camp. Oh, okay. But it was later. It was about a month later. Oh, okay. You were really lucky to have your predecessor's predecessor, mm -hmm. you know, show you around. Another person, yeah. I had my, um, for the bank account, I believe my junior high school teacher mm -hmm. that I worked at. The junior high school I worked at, they um, you know, helped me through the process of mm -hmm. doing that. For the phone, I had to do it myself. Oh yeah, I did that myself yeah. too. And the registration at the Board of Education, you know, the signing the contract mm -hmm. and all that was with the teacher. Mm -hmm. So in some cases, you'll have your predecessors help you, I guess, in your situation, for example. Yeah. And then others, you might have to you have your, you know, your Board of Education supervisor or your teacher help you through that. Mm -hmm. Or you just might be, unfortunately left to do everything by yourself. Yeah, it can be difficult if you don't speak Japanese. Um, pretty much everything except my like actual cell phone mm -hmm. was, I was helped with. I decided I would just uh, go to like one of the stores in Sapporo and try to set it up myself. Because mm -hmm. by then I could speak like enough Japanese to be able to say, <laughs> I want phone. <laughs> Please tell me the details, how much, and stuff like that. Right. And the people in the shop were very patient and let me use like a dictionary app if I needed to. Oh, yeah. there you go. So it's not impossible. You can do it yourself. And if, nowadays, you know, Google Translate can do pretty much everything. So yeah, nowadays everything's a lot easier. No, I didn't choose anywhere. 
because oh. I didn't really have a specific preference. I had already lived in Tokyo.、Mm -hmm. I was here for two semesters studying abroad in college. Yeah, I had experience living in Tokyo, and they did ask that during the interview. They said, "Oh, you haven't put a preference down." And I said, "Well, I don't really have a preference. Anywhere is fine, but I would kind of prefer it not be Tokyo because I've already experienced that, and I'd like to experience something new." But with my friends, I was always joking. Oh, they're gonna put me in some rural town in Hokkaido, and that's exactly what happened. So, a lot of people in the town said, "Oh, why did you choose this town?" And I said, "I had never heard of this place before." <laughs> But I'm really glad、uh, that it worked out well.、Oh. One nice thing is that I have to use Japanese, so my Japanese has improved a lot since I first arrived. But if I were in somewhere like Tokyo. You can kind of get by、right. without using much Japanese, so yeah, I'm, I'm glad that I was forced to use Japanese. That's that's what I wanted. So,、uh, so I mean, in her case, she didn't really pick a place, but she got placed in Hokkaido. For me, I picked you know, sort of rural and sort of、um, mm -hmm. uh, city.、Mm -hmm. So, but I got placed somewhere completely different. So, you know, although you can pick your place where you want to go, you know, places that you'd like to go. It's not always guaranteed, or in most cases, it's not guaranteed at all. Yeah, my predecessor's predecessor had picked Kansai,、yeah. and he got placed in Hokkaido, which is quite nothing, 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 you know, yeah, quite nothing similar. Yeah, quite far away. <laughs> yeah, and I think I also chose Kansai as well, and I didn't get obviously I didn't get Kansai, but a lot closer than、mm -hmm. Hokkaido, perhaps. Right. My area. There wasn't really anything I prepared ahead of time. I had kind of looked over some activities and orientation. They had gone over some like fun games and given us a little bit of advice on the types of things to prepare and to expect. But I didn't really know all the details until I got to my town, or like how the lessons would be until I'd seen them. When I was on my own, I had to figure out how to explain the lesson plans to elementary school. We had to plan those lessons. There was a textbook, but the kind of the way the class was set up was sort of English is fun. Let's learn some words and like simple phrases、right. and have fun. So even though I had to plan the lessons, it was mostly okay. Let's go over these flashcards. All right, let's play a game. And then the next time, okay, let's go over the flashcards again. Let's play a game to review. And then we'd practice the conversation and just play a lot of games. Back then,、um, if I was going to like the junior high school, for example, occasionally we'd have six periods in a row, and those days were rough. But more often than not,、um, we would have about four, like three, four, five classes a day.、Um, so sometimes the teachers would ask me ahead of time to prepare something, or if I hadn't heard anything in a while, I hadn't been to the school, I'd message them and say, "Hey." Anything you want me to prepare? One game I made was I actually I drew、mm -hmm. um, different tiles. They had to make their own town and use like my town. In my town there is a, or in my town there are there are whatever. And so I actually drew pictures <laughs> and made like a bunch of different variants of it for them to play, like a kind of like a matching game. Ah, I see. Okay. Yeah. Elementary school. First, it started out as it's not a subject. It's only like a kind of like a fun school, like activity based thing, which was twice a month for only fifth and sixth grade. But I would sometimes visit the younger grades, maybe like once or twice a semester, just to do like a cultural exchange type thing. But、oh, how many years ago was it? A few years ago, English became. The hours increased for fifth and sixth grade.、Um, it also became like an activity subject for third and fourth grade. When it was only twice a month, the, the ALTs made the lesson plans in my town. But it was very simple, so it was really easy, and you could pretty much do the same thing every time, but just change exactly. But with the new textbooks, it was there was a lot more to cover, and you needed to be a lot more. You needed to like adhere to the textbook a lot more. So things like listening activities and writing activities and stuff you had to do. So、um, the 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 ALT who had been there for a while he was actually put in charge of the English program, and 
we made between the two of us, it was mostly him, we actually made like a transitional curriculum. Ooh. Yeah, so I made I helped make those and we're actually still using those lesson plans for third and fourth grade. But this year with the new fifth and sixth grade, uh, we can't use the transitional one anymore because the textbook changed. Oh. oh. And yeah. <laughs> However, we we asked our board of education and it turned out that the publishing company mm -hmm who had made the new books had actually made like a really good teacher's guide with like each lesson plan detailed. Left page is Japanese, right page is English. Having a lesson plan was really convenient because now we have so many hours that we don't really have time to talk with the teachers like as in depth. Uh, sometimes the teachers will tweak it a little bit. Yeah, they'll say, oh, I want to do this or we'll say, this activity is kind of bad, let's try something else. And so usually we'll just talk before class. But the yeah, the, the elementary school has completely changed from when I came to now. So, you know, just make sure, you know, if you're working, ask if there's a teacher edition or mm -hmm. you know something so you can use that as a base and make it yeah. Really easier. Yeah, I'm not required to participate in school events because I go to so many schools and like the, B, the Board of Education oh. manages me, like the schools will usually invite me. Mm -hmm. um, for example, the junior high school has like school festival and the like sports day. Uh, but if I go to those events, it's not counted as work. Uh, so it's like I'm going on my own time. So I've gone sometimes in the past. Well, I guess you don't have any part you know, like role or anything when you go to it, right? No, I just, I just participate as like customer or like spectator or whatever yeah okay so you get the fun part so that's one thing i should mention you work at the boe or you yeah. you're assigned at the boe mm -hmm. so i was assigned at a school so right. for people who are assigned at schools typically you have to go to the events yeah. for that school so for me i have to go to my junior high school's events and then you know participate in the bunkasai mm -hmm. or the culture festival and the sports festivals and then for my first year the culture festival they had they had me and the other alt at the school participate in the play that they did oh wow so we had to you know act in a play for the <laughs> junior high school event so that was very you might be asked to do that so yeah. you know, be aware of that and then also for the um, sports festival you know the teachers run as well so you might be asked to you know participate in the relays or help out with the things and in that case then you can't come and go as you please you have right. to stay until the, the end of it but you do get the day off, a late day off later on. Oh yeah, you yeah. get like Daiki, you get an extra day off. Yeah. Yeah, I know I've heard of some people who also have had to work those events, but they haven't gotten the day off or oh. that they've asked about it later and they're like, uh oh, I guess we have to give you Yeah. So make sure you know ahead of time if you're gonna get an, a day off. Because yeah. those events are usually on Saturdays or something. Yeah. Yeah, I guess there's a lot of differences. Um, I think in the U.S. for middle school, you don't really, I mean, you have homeroom, but you don't really have like a class uh, and your classes will change every year because you choose right. which classes to take. Whereas here, throughout like the school year, the school years, they're with the same people. It was like that in Italy. <laughs> so for me, it wasn't that strange, but maybe for people who've only been in like American school, it can be kind of weird to see the same kids in the same class huh. year after year. I think the main thing that's different is how involved the school is in the students' lives. In America, if you're not involved in like school clubs or anything, you basically go to school, go home. Um, whereas in Japan, if it's not required by the school for you to do a club activity, it's very much like required by peer pressure, I think. I sometimes feel bad for the students because like the baseball, baseball is crazy in Japan. Oh. It's like, it's like a cult. Yep. Like I'll see the kids at school really early in the morning practicing baseball and then they'll be there till late at night in the snow practicing oh, baseball. <laughs> That's what I've seen, title. <laughs> yeah, I've seen them practicing in the snow and I'm like, even just the other, the other clubs, like they have practice like almost every day, yeah. even on weekends and it's just so involved and I think it's generally looked down upon to like skip. Yeah. Like you have to have a really good reason to need to skip. I think in the States, I think it depends on the schools. If you're involved in sports right. and you're like a really competitive team, then you might have like more practices and stuff. Yeah. But if it's not a super competitive team, then yeah. Any other club activities? I mean, you know, besides sports, you know, they have, I think, 
for my my school we had like art classes, mm -hmm. music, you know, yeah. or not classes but um, clubs. Did you ever participate? Try and participate in one of those? No. So my working hours usually end like before the clubs are over, right. and sometimes the clubs start a little later. Mm -hmm. But sometimes if I'm still at school after school for like practice for English, they, they might want to practice a bit after school and sometimes I'll stay after my working hours because uh, I actually get like overtime hours oh, wow. that I can use. Oh. Yeah, I think I'm pretty rare in that as well. Um, so that's something some people might be interested mm -hmm. in, like depending if you work at a BOE it might be a bit yeah. difficult because you're at the BOE right. after work, you know, after class is over. But if you work at a school, you might have the opportunity to, you know, join a club or join an activity. I've joined a few, uh, the high school is Agricultural High School. Oh yeah. And there's a program called JICA that brings like foreign workers over to like study Japanese agricultural techniques and stuff. I think once or twice a year, JICA participants come to our Agricultural High School. So at that time, I've helped with um, showing them around and I've we joined like agricultural classes or like special presentations and we also have an exchange with a school in America oh, wow. and so twice since I've been here uh, students from America have come and I've joined classes with them and we joined some of the agricultural classes oh, wow. so that was really cool oh yeah so yeah. make sure you, you might have those kind of activities yeah. at your school so check that out those are really interesting <laughs> Probably communicating with teachers is the hardest part. Luckily at the junior high school, in high school, the teachers speak English, mm -hmm. no problem. So it, even if you don't speak any Japanese, uh, it can be easier if you're at a school like that. But at elementary school, the teachers usually don't. So when having meetings and trying to like explain what you want to do, if you don't feel comfortable with Japanese, right. it can be difficult. Uh, the teachers are pretty patient and I could already speak Japanese like a good bit when I came. Sometimes I'd have to like explain it several times because the teacher didn't understand it and then in explaining it too many times I would get confused <laughs> and then they get confused and we both be like, what's going on? That, those are the main difficulties and sometimes students can be a little cheeky but... Uh, students are students, right? Yeah, what it's, you? I'm not really that bothered by it. Uh, okay. okay, what about availability of teachers? I only ask this because I had difficulty like the teachers are always, you know, super busy with their own things and such. So sometimes mm -hmm. it's difficult to, especially in elementary school, to, you know, make time to, you know, discuss the next schedule and such. Yeah. Did you have that issue? Usually, if we know that the teachers aren't gonna have time to meet with us, we usually just try to get. There's like ten minutes in between class, right. so we usually will just get there when the previous class ends and try to talk to them real quick then. Um, for elementary, like I said, we already have the lesson plans right. written out, so. We, if we if we decide to plan an activity, we just say, oh, hello, we brought an activity that we'd like to do at this point in the lesson. And the teachers are usually like, oh, okay, great, cool. We also, at junior high school and high school, we have line groups oh, wow. with the teachers. So if we need to prepare anything, uh, they can let us know or we can ask. Oh, wow, that's convenient. Mm -hmm. Wish we had that. Yeah, so um, in terms of like outside of the workplace, I do sometimes have to work. Um, we have an Eikaiwa circle in the town that the ALTs are in charge of, and it's in the evenings. So I get like the overtime time mm -hmm. for that. I also, for a while, I had joined a Taiko club. Oh, wow. That was like, because they have the school clubs, but they also have like the town wide uh, clubs or whatever that are available to pretty much anyone. And I was interested in Taiko. I like the, the arcade game, <laughs> the Taiko arcade game. I'm not very good at it, but <laughs> it's fun. Uh, so I joined Taiko for a while, but because the day that it was on coincided with when the English circle was, mm -hmm. I could only go sometimes, and I eventually quit because I was just bad at it, and it was a hassle, and I felt bad like going and sucking really bad because I hadn't been to the previous practice. So yeah, I, I tried that for a bit and then quit. I also participated in the town Bonodori one oh. year, the festival. That was, it was pretty fun, but it was raining and we had to dance around in a circle doing the same thing for like two hours. So it was kind of, it was a good experience, but I didn't do it again. <laughs> I was actually going to do it this year. 
but Ooh. it got canceled. Oh. So I couldn't. I usually hang out outside of my town mm -hmm. because there's not much to do, mm -hmm. like directly in town. There are festivals and stuff, but other than that, it's pretty limited. Yeah. And I don't really like going out to drink or anything. Mm -hmm. So I just either stay home or I go hang out in the city nearby. Um, I have a gym membership. Oh. So nice. I go to the gym. And what about shopping? You know, can you easily do you, can you easily find things that you need or want in your area or do you have to go to like the city where you Yeah, because I go to the gym in like the next town over, okay. that town is basically just shops galore. There's shops Ooh. everywhere. And it's only about a 10 minute drive from the city. Oh wow. So there's all kinds of shopping. Um, so usually I don't really shop in town unless I need, in like my small town, unless mm -hmm. I need to grab a few things or I want something like specific that they only sell there. Um, but yeah, I'm able to find pretty much everything and online you can find a lot of stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. The Kuroneko Yamato people know me very well <laughs> because I'm always ordering stuff on like Japanese Amazon or just different things. Yeah, all the, all the delivery people know me very well. Oh yes, <laughs> I know that feeling. Yeah. But, uh... Yeah, sometimes if I want to make something like really specific, it can be difficult to find ingredients, so I have to like plan ahead of time. Right. But yeah, pretty much everything I could want I can find. Because the city is pretty international, there's like a Southeast Asian market, so you can find like all kinds of different ingredients there. Recently especially there's been a bit of a like Korea boom. So like Korean stuff is becoming popular and so it's much easier to find ingredients to make Korean food. And a lot of the ingredients to make Korean food are actually like pretty similar to what's available in Japanese supermarkets or you can make some substitutions. Um, so I actually cook a lot of Korean food. Oh. I, I like spicy food and for me Japanese food is not spicy oh, enough. Yeah. It's more sweet. And it's like yeah. sweet and has like subtle flavor, but sometimes I just want to breathe fire. You know? <laughs> so I make spicy Korean food. I've made Indian food before. That was a lot of work. And I got spices online and cool. stuff. And then you can easily find the ingredients, you know, online mm -hmm. or in your area if you if they have it. If they're not, then you just find it online. Yeah. So and cool. when I come to Tokyo, because Tokyo has like a Korean area. Okay. I usually go there and stock up on ingredients. They just have bigger sizes of things. Ah, uh, I see. Okay. Whereas maybe in the supermarket near me, it's like this much for 300 yen. Ooh. Instead of here, it's like this much for 300 yen. Uh. Yeah, during the summer, I try to take day trips because Hokkaido has a lot of really nice places. And mm -hmm. because me and my friends, most of us have cars, uh, we can kind of take little road trips or day trips and go drive places, but in the winter I pretty I stay pretty local. I like going to karaoke a lot, Ooh. so I do that for like five or six hours. <laughs> well, uh, Japanese trash sorting is really annoying, <laughs> especially because I'm pretty sure they don't actually recycle it the way they say they do, so it makes me kind of mad that I have to like wash everything perfectly and separate it into a million boxes. In the winter, it's really cold. Ooh. And so sometimes I will have to change our plans because it's snowing, it's a blizzard. But yeah, I don't really I don't really have too many issues. I agree with the trash thing. That's... Yeah, the trash is something. So depending on where you're living, I guess. I mean, in the more rural areas, I found that it's more, very, a lot more strict than like in the cities. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah. I've had my trash rejected before Ooh. for like very silly reasons, or maybe I had like a really tiny thing that wasn't a like piece of really dirty plastic that I threw in the burnable, and it was like in the middle of the trash. And they're like, no, you had a piece of plastic there. And I'm like, did you dig through? Like, did you did you sort the whole thing? I've noticed them get more and more lenient. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed that my Japanese neighbors also don't necessarily sort their trash properly. So I don't, I haven't had my trash get rejected in a really long time. Oh. So I don't feel too bad. Yeah, you have to buy the special bags too. Ooh, so if you run out, you have to buy new ones because they'll only accept the trash in this specific bag. And they're usually more expensive, or in some cases, they're more expensive than like, you know, if you went to Dyson. Yeah, Dyson bags, right? I think though, in buying the trash bags, you're essentially paying like the fee that it would 
cost to collect trash. Oh, I like see. it's instead of it coming out of taxes or whatever, it comes out of like the, the trash is. bags. So it's it's all right. Okay. I don't want to get into exactly how much you make, although it's pretty much online how much Jets make. Yeah, Jets make the same, like the base salary is the same, but the only difference is how much taxes or health insurance will be taken out. I think the, the how much that cost depends on the area. So you, your first year is like a certain amount, and then you get a bit of a raise the second, third, and fourth years, and then fourth and fifth year are the same. Mm -hmm. Now they've changed the tax agreement for Americans. So when I first came, I didn't have to pay income or residence tax for my first two years. And then from my third year on, I had to pay income tax, so it was taken out of my paycheck. So even though I got a raise, it kind of balanced out. Residence tax, mm -hmm. you generally pay in the current year for the previous year. So my first year, like last year, I was only, I, it, I was only in Japan paying residence tax for like the last couple months of the year mm -hmm. because it counted from like from August, yeah. only from August to December, so it was really low. And then this year in May, I saw it basically triple, and I was like, oh my gosh, why is it so expensive all of a sudden? So yeah, so my paycheck from last year to this year has actually gone down, because that stuff gets taken out. But one thing I'm really lucky in is I get subsidized housing. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so a lot of Jets might live in public housing or teacher's housing, which is cheap. Yeah. And so they might not have that subsidized, or they might. I live in just a regular like, apartment, mm -hmm. just in town. And I didn't really get a choice because the BOE set it up for me, which was nice. But it's it's a pretty good place. It's not gross or old or anything, so I'm pretty okay with it. And the rent is, if you're in Tokyo, if you wanted to pay the amount of rent, you'd be in a really rundown, small place. But I have two bedrooms wow. and like a big room that's like a living room slash ki kitchen. Oh wow, jeez. Yeah. Good it's a little, luxury there. It's a little too big. I don't really need <laughs> I don't really need that much space. So with your apartment, mm -hmm. you know, was it did you have to pay any key money or like any upfront fees some people have to pay? No, I didn't have to pay any of that. I was basically just taking over from my predecessor. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't have to pay any of that thankfully. Uh, I just had to pay my first month of rent in advance, but I don't think my predecessor had to either, because oh. I don't know if they deliberately searched for properties that didn't have key money, because that's becoming more of a thing now right. in Japan. Like, you don't need to pay key money or if, like de the deposit isn't so high. Yeah, none of us had to pay that. I don't know if it's just because the town did it, <laughs> they're more reliable, so if they paid it for us or if they waived it for them, I, I don't know. Okay, and then um, what about your apartment? Was it furnished already when it came? Like, was so, stuff already there? our board of education provides the essential furniture for us. And so like, after an ALT leaves, anything that was bought by the BOE, they, they, they have to leave behind. Right. Um, they'll also replace stuff for us if it gets broken. Oh. I've since bought a lot of extra like shelving, and I bought a big table because Japanese kitchens are really small. Right. And because I like to cook, I needed more counter space. One of the other ALTs in the area actually built counters. Oh Jesus, oh wow. Very, very crafty person, <laughs> very handy. It was already furnished, okay. but that's probably not gonna be the case for a lot of people unless, if it's teacher's housing uh, or public housing, they might have some stuff, yeah. So just check before you come over, you know, check your, your BOE, I guess. Yeah. And whoever's your supervisor to see what's available so you can kind of plan out what you need to purchase and what. Mm -hmm. Is already there. Are you able to save up quite a bit on your on the jet, jet seller um, for savings? Well, I don't really save much money. I travel a lot. Oh. And I like going to concerts. And also, I'm in a long distance relationship. So if we want to see each other, we have to fly. Uh. Yeah. So I don't really save money mm -hmm. as such. I tend to use it on those things. Right. But. If I didn't do those things, I could probably save uh, a and decent it, amount of money. Okay, but you're, you can live comfortably on the salary, right? Yeah, least. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, besides, you know, traveling and such like that, do you have any other tips for you know, saving money, perhaps, you know, buying cheap food? Stuff? Definitely, uh, I know a lot of people who eat out all the time or eat convenience store food a lot. 
I think if you if you cook at home, it can be really good for your budget um, because buying groceries is definitely cheaper than eating out or a convenience store. I tend to, if I go to the grocery store when I'm hungry, I'll tend to buy a bunch of stuff and then end up wasting it if it's fresh. So what I try to do is I try to plan out, um, I look at my schedule. I eat school lunches almost almost every day. Ooh, nice. uh, they don't have school lunch at the high school, but if I'm at the other schools, I will have school lunch. Um, so I try to look at my schedule and plan out how many meals I need to make for that week and kind of buy ingredients based on, go shopping and buy stuff based on that to avoid wasting food. And then do, do they sell like regional, you know, farmers in the area or, you know, those mm -hmm. sort of things, community? Do they sell yeah. cheap food sometimes? Yeah, because I live in a really rural farming area, um, especially in the summer, they have, at the local grocery store, they have like a farmer's veggie corner where they sell stuff for really cheap. There's, if I drive a little bit, there are a couple different like farms that just sell mm -hmm. on the side of the road. Ooh. Like they, they have a stand right. in like a parking area or something, but they'll sell stuff. So all summer I eat giant zucchini. They cost about 100 yen oh, for like geez. a really big one, right? Oh man, like that's like cheap. It's great. I love zucchini, so. No, okay, so there you have it. You know, one way to save money, you know, cook. Yeah. And then also, Check if your area has you know local regional food, which yeah. tends to be a lot cheaper than what you find at the normal supermarkets. And buy seasonal. Oh. Seasonal. So I like fruit and vegetables, which fruit is really expensive in Japan. Oh, but if you buy when it's in season, it's cheaper and also tastes better. I think if you're interested in Japanese culture or like Japanese. Uh, media, mm -hmm. like as I am, then it's definitely easier to live here if you have like that level of motivation. Mm -hmm. Definitely the culture is very different, even just like the way you would interact with people or like certain things are expected right. um, that you might not be familiar with, so you could have issues there. Communication can also be difficult, but I think the best thing is to, if something goes wrong or if you like do something and it makes someone mad at you. If it's a cultural difference, you kind of have to not beat yourself up about it too much. Well, definitely join the Facebook groups and like online discussions that aren't like officially affiliated with JET or that are just made by JET participants. I didn't do any of that and I'm pretty sure if I had, there would have been a lot more information that I would have gotten ahead of time that could have been useful. Because uh, JET itself doesn't give you that much information. Uh, and when they do, it can be kind of short notice. But like, you have to take into consideration that it's like American governments having to communicate with the people, and then also with the people within the organization, and then with Japan. And then Japan, the, whoever's working in Japan has to communicate with other people. It's just the whole thing. Uh, so yeah, being patient. Uh, definitely if you're applying, I would say start saving up money as soon as you apply because I only came over with about $3,000. I bought a car, so that took out a good bit. I paid one month of rent, but I didn't get paid until I was already here for a month. Oh, yeah. yeah, my first paycheck didn't come right. because the, the pay date might not be for a month or a right. month and a half. So I needed enough money for like car, two months of rent, food, and exist. Yeah, expenses. exist for a, m a month and a half. Yeah, but because I didn't have to buy furniture or anything, um, with that much money, it was definitely a little tight, but it was okay. If you have to buy furniture and you have key money and an apartment and everything, it's gonna be a lot more expensive. Yeah, yeah so start budgeting and don't procrastinate on the application. Uh, yes. And review your essay a million times. Have someone else check it to yeah. make sure it's... Yeah, have someone else check it. Maybe someone who, if you know someone who's gotten accepted to JET or someone who like has experience with that kind of thing, maybe have them check it. I absolutely agree. Research is important. Mm -hmm. Money is important. Patience. Every situation is different. Oh God, yes. So you'll probably hear this a lot online when JETs talk about you know the program and such. ESID, so yeah. every situation is different. Yeah, there's a lot of acronyms in JET too. <laughs> I know, but like, there are so many, there's so much jargon and acronyms that I think when I went to my 
it was it wasn't a pre-departure orientation it was a meet and greet people were throwing around all these acronyms and because i hadn't gotten or hadn't read through the like general information handbook that in depth i was like what are you talking about the gih which they call yeah, general the gih i'm like what are you talking about do your research on that kind of stuff or else you'll be very confused oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, well, thank you for, you know, sharing your experiences and, you know, good luck in Japan and your next year, last year, I believe, in Jet. Yeah. So, that's all for today. Hopefully, you found this video very informative and you like it. If so, please hit the like button below and uh, please subscribe to our video channel as well for more videos such as this, as well as other videos in the future regarding Japanese lifestyle and living in Japan. But that's all for today and thank you for joining us. Goodbye and see you. Goodbye. Sometimes I, I watch them when they're doing PE at the junior high school. If I have like an open period, I see the schedule. I'm like, oh, they're doing PE, and it can be really funny because they'll have to do like they have to jump over the boxes. Oh god, yes. And some of the kids are really good at it, and they just like fly over oh, yeah. it. So but other kids are so bad at it, and I know that would be me too if I tried. Well, that was me. But it's kind of funny to watch because some kids will just like try to somersault and then just completely fall over, and you're like kind of laughing but also kind of feel bad.